Hey, Kevin, what are you doing? I get a lot of questions, both email and on the website, on the on YouTube. Can you tell me the settings I need to weld on something? And it's really not that easy. You know, there's there's a little bit of trial and error that goes into it. You know, there's a few little parameters, you know, a few little you know basics I can give you. You know, some place to start from, and then you got to practice a little. You got to play with it a little. It's amazing how often I wind up on my knees. I don't know. <laughs> this is my Miller uh, 251 MIG welder, and they put a really nice little chart inside here. So this is the chart that Miller puts on their on a lot of their uh, welders, and you can see. It'll show you what kind of material you're using, you know, steel, um, steel or stainless or aluminum if you've got the spool gun to go with it, you know, and the suggested types of wire, which is a really big help sometimes. The suggested flow rate for the gas and also what kind of gas, the straight argon, CO2 mix, blah, 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 blah. But then you get into this section right here where they have all the different wire sizes, and then they have the thicknesses of metal, and then all the different suggestions, you know, starting suggestions. So I've got some quarter-inch mild steel over there I was going to play with. So you go to quarter-inch, and I know this is uh, O30 wire, you know, steel, and you would... Uh, I know I'm running mixed gas, you know, so it's... Uh, 75% argon, 25% CO2. So I would come over in here and it would tell me, well, with O30, I want to start at about 19.6 volts and about 435 inches of wire. So that just gives you a place to start. You know? Then you go to your bench, you set up a little test piece, you know, a little practice piece, and fine-tune it from there. So anyway, piece of piece of quarter inch plate from some other project I, I did a while back. I've got the machine set at 19.6 uh, volts and 435 inches, just like they said. So let's just try a little bit and we'll see how it looks. Just remember, you know, first time you turn the machine on for the day, turn your bottle on. Don't forget to bleed it a little bit. You know, make sure you got argon all the way to the end of your torch. the base settings that Miller said. And I would actually say that that was just a little bit cold. So I would probably bump it from that 19.6 volts. I'd bump it up to, say, about 20.6. How are you determining that it's a little cold? Well, come down here and take a look. See how this weld is kind of high? You know, it's got a little hump going right down the middle of it. You see, that should be a little bit flatter and a little bit wider, especially for that much wire coming out of there. So, you know, in my opinion, I would say that's just a little cold. So isn't that just a little bit too much wire feed? Well, it's possible. You know, it, it all depends really on the amount of uh, gap that you may have in there, you know, how, what kind of penetration you're trying to get. But you can control that a little with voltage also. You know, if you're putting a lot of wire in it, you can up, up the voltage just a little bit, get a little more penetration, get a little bit wider bead on there. Or you can turn the wire feed down a little bit, leave it at the same voltage, and kind of get the same effect. A little bit one way, a little bit the other. And you can fudge it one way or the other a little bit. So, you know, I, yeah, you could go either way. You could turn the wire feed down, or you could turn the voltage up. As long as you're getting penetration. As long as you're getting penetration. We'll, we'll look at the other side of, the, of this when we, after we make this next weld. Because I left a little gap in there. I left about a... Uh, sixteenth of an inch gap or so, you know, just to get a little penetration down inside there. And we can see how far down it got just by flipping it over and look at the gap on the other side. Did the weld come all the way through? Did I weld it to the bench? Yeah, I do that on occasion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let, let's just turn the, turn the voltage up a little bit, and I'll run a little bit over here, and then we'll take a look at it. Well, what are the things that would make it not be perfect at the settings that Miller recommends. I mean, why would it be any different from one job to another? If Miller says that's the setting, why didn't it work? Well, this is just a suggested starting. 
point. It's not, you know, recommended, this is what you weld, this metal, that, that, you know, this, it's not, it's not cut in stone, it's just a suggestion. But, you know, things that would make a change, well, I'm welding on the top of a piece of one inch plate. So, I've got this whole table helping to suck the heat out of the piece that I'm welding. So, really, you want a little more voltage there, a little more heat, because you've got this big heat sink under it. If I had this same piece of plate elevated up in the air, this might be just about right. You know, I might only go up a point or two, you know, rather than like a whole volt. A whole volt. Uh, positions, you know, are you welding horizontal, vertical, overhead? Those are all going to change the settings a little bit, one way or the other. And that's where practice comes in. So let me bump this up a little, and I'll make another little run right there. Anyway, so that's 20.6 volts, same wire feed. So you can see this was the first one at 19.6. Uh, this is the second one at 20.6. Made it a little bit wider, I mean, a little wider bead on it, just by going up a volt on it. Uh, still got that little raised hump in the middle, you know, that little peak right there. So a little less wire feed maybe, you know, a little slower travel speed. Lots of different variables, you know, so there's really no cut and dried solution to it. But let's look on the other side. So I'm just looking on the back of it. This is the this is the run I made at 19.6, and this is the one I made at 20.6. And if you look real close, you'll see well the bead actually did get all the way to the bottom at 19.6. But at 20.6 it didn't. Now how did that work? More practice. That's what I always say. Just more practice, more learning. You know, play with the settings. You know, figure it out. You know, figure out what works for you, for your location, for your job. You know, with your machine. They're all different. Different. Just like people. We're all different. We all do things just a little bit differently. But go out to the Miller site and go look for that chart because you can actually download that from Miller and have that chart for yourself. Uh, how about, Kevin, when you're working on a project, should you, what, have a couple of scraps around? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, always have a little piece of scrap around. You know, I like to keep a piece that's the same thickness as whatever metal I'm working with. You know, so you want to change settings, or, you know, you think you want to, you, you want to change the settings a little bit, go ahead and change the settings, play over there. You know, figure out what you're doing right there, come back over and do your work here. If you change position, you know, from horizontal to vertical, Get a piece of scrap, prop it up on your bench. Do your vertical welding over here, your vertical practice over here. Get that all figured out, get the settings figured out, then go back to your piece. You know, same with same with overhead. I'm gonna try to figure out why that worked that way. So off to the internet I go, but I hope that answers your questions. I'll see you next time.